Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and this video is going to be really special, we're going to do something really cool. On this video I'm going to show you how to recreate Mozart's Lacrimosa from his last work Requiem in Cubase using just two libraries and I'm going to do everything completely from scratch right after this. Recently I did a video analyzing the course on Lacrimosa, the ascending scale part, and I had an arrangement done in Cubase for this. So today I'm going to show you how I did this, how I created this from a completely blank Cubase project with not even one MIDI note in it. So let's get started. I'm going to show you the libraries that I use, the techniques, I'm going to show you how I orchestrated, how I treat the dynamics, everything, and it's going to be lots of fun. On this video I'm honestly going to try not to edit the MIDI notes because I have very strong feelings when it comes to arranging for orchestras inside a DAW and I'm going to talk about all these things today while I'm creating this piece. So first things first, meter. The meter is 12.8 and as you can see, I've added a time signature here. And, and as you can see, I'm taking advantage of, oh, this is a guts and guys, like the click patterns inside Cubase. One of the things that I had to struggle with when I was working with other DAWs and I was arranging things like this was that, you know, you have compound time signatures or seven eighths and you have no idea where you are. When here, you can see that I have 12 eighths, but every three beats every three eighth notes cubase gives me an accent okay because i've created this next bar okay so this is very important when you write in these kind of time signatures so that's the first tip try and use the click pattern editor there and just try and change your pattern so that it helps you when you are creating things like this when it's 4 4 it's not that big of a deal but here i need to know where you know i am at any given time. So let me talk about the libraries that I'm going to use today. I'm going to use just two libraries, okay? Just two of them. And the first library is Iconica. Here it is. This is going to take care of all of my orchestral parts, okay? The orchestra is going to be Iconica for everything. And for the choirs, I'm going to be using East West Hollywood Choirs, which is an incredible library. But the most important thing about this library is that it has a word builder. So as you can see, I have written all the words in phonetics right in there, which I took from the book actually, and I have created the text there in phonetics. So let's get started. In order to do this, I want to do this right. So at first I thought, you know what, I'm going to use my book here. I have the Lacrimosa. I could approximate it and basically do it, you know, by ear, but come on, let's do it right, okay? But then I thought, okay, I'm going to text my good friend John Barron, who actually does quite a few videos for Dorico, the notation program that I have right here, and that's actually what I use all the time when I'm orchestrating and I'm creating parts from musicians. And he was kind enough to send me a rendition of the Requiem for Dorico. So I can see it right there and I don't have to flip the pages. So thank you, John. Guys, please leave some love at the Dorico YouTube channel because the guys are amazing. They're all amazing musicians. You know, respect. So here's what I can do here. I can see the entire score in Dorico, which is really useful, but I can also see the part. So let's say I want to start with the viola. I can go right there. And I think I'm going to start with the viola because it's the first instrument that kind of gives me the harmony. Now, I have to say, I'm not going to play the entire piece. I'm going to orchestrate just the part that Mozart wrote until he died. So it's the first eight bars, but it's going to be lots of fun. So let's get started. Now that's a tricky bit because this is in the alto clef. So if you're not a viola player like myself, it's a little bit of calculation that has to go inside your brain in order to play the right notes. Because this, for example, looks like a C, but actually it's a D, okay? Now let's go ahead and play the violas. And the way that I'm approaching this is I take a look at the dynamics. It's piano, right? So I'm going to go... But you have to keep in mind that the strings, like the violins, the first violins play That's the kind of the rhythm. So even though this could be I have to, I'm going to lift the key a little bit earlier so that I leave space 
for the violins later on, okay? Let's try and play the viola and you will see that the thing that I'm going to be doing a lot for this is I'm going to be using the mod wheel to control the dynamics. And I think this is the most important tip that I can give you when you're orchestrating for orchestral instruments like violins, uh, violas, cellos, brass, flutes, all these things. Most of the times the notes have an arc, they are not static, they're not like... So even a tiny bit of mod wheel... You know, feel, feel the rhythm, feel like you're breathing these notes into the instrument. Okay, like a real player would do... You can kind of feel, feel the music. And these are single notes, even if you're not a keyboard player, you can do this. So let's get started, let's record that viola first. Crescendo. And there we go, we have the violas now, let's move on to the second violins. And it's exactly the same philosophy. Let me change the score a little bit here and go to my second violins. And there we go. Also another tip, try and add a little bit of mod wheel at the very beginning while you have the pre-count so that, you know, your CC controllers don't jump very abruptly, okay, and you get this like conk, you know, things. If you've ever orchestrated for synths, you will know what I mean. Breathing. Okay, I did a little bit of longer notes there, but I think it's going to work well with the arrangement. Now, let's move on to the first violins, okay? Now, this is a very important part, and this needs a lot of expression. This you cannot do if you don't use the mode wheel, okay? So I might exaggerate a little bit more with the mod wheel, but that's where you can add your own tone to the piece. Let's try that. Really, really nice. I love the first violin line. It's, it's like a, you know, it's like, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, these things, you know, they convey so much feeling and so much expression. It's really unreal. Now, let's move on to the next part. I think I'm going to take care of the basset horns now, and I think I'm going to play both of them at once. Okay, let's do this. There we go. Now I have the basset horns. 
there we go. The closest thing to a basset horn uh, for a more modern orchestra would be the clarinet, but that was the original orchestration that Mozart wrote for back in the day. It was basset horn. So it goes like this. So the corny di bassetto coming at bar three. So I think I can pick up from here, maybe. Mod wheel. Let's go to the Fagotti now. They also start, I think, on bar three, so I can take it from the same spot. Let's see. By the way, the sounds are really incredible. They're so expressive. Let's keep recording. And hear all these little noises in the background, like real musicians played this. That's what I like about Iconic. It sounds so nice and so authentic. Let's move on to, okay, what do we have next? We have the trumpets. Okay, the trumpets, actually, let me go to the trumpets. And uh, they play only on bar eight. So let's go straight here. Okay. And... They just play a forte, you know, in octaves, and they couple them with the timpanis, you know, in the classical era. So let's do this. And now straight away I'm going to do the timpanis, because I'm pretty sure that they just couple the trumpets, right? Yes. Yes. Again, on bar number eight. Let's do this. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, let's see what else we can do. I think I'm going to write the basses now. So this is the basso continuo. This comprised of like cello, or double bass, but you know, also organ sometimes. It really depends on the time and the period. But for this one, what I've done is I have um, Iconic Ensembles patch along with the 2D to solo pipes from Halion Sonic. So, so I have this nice organ there as well to give me a little bit of low end, you know to make it a little bit bigger. So, let's see, and let's go to the basso continuo, and uh, let's uh, go to, I mean, violoncello will be fine for this one. And we're going to start on bar three. Let's do this. Crescendo. Yes. Nice. Okay, I think now I'm going to do the trombones and the trombones 
It's something that I'm not sure if that was originally written. I'm not ex entirely sure. My book says that there are no trombones, but on some other renditions I found trombones. So I'm going to just lay down a couple of trombones. This is, I've named it alto, but it's actually like a tenor trombone. And what I'm doing is, as you can see, I'm trying to make every note a little bit dynamic. I haven't touched any of the MIDI notes, I haven't touched any of the controllers. This is all played in real time, I'm not even editing it. And let me show you, for example, if I go here, you will see that here is my controllers. I mean, ignore the aftertouch. This is just what the complete control, you know, does when I press the keys. But what you care about is this one. Okay, see the trombone? See what I've done right here? See, it's always like a little bit of an arc. Whoop, it's like a... So it goes higher and higher and higher, and this is how you can get really dynamic orchestrations, right? If you play static notes, it's going to sound fake. That's not how a real instrument works, okay? Most instruments, they have a little bit of an arc when they play, especially when this instrument entails breathing or using a bow or all these things. You know, this is all like a very physical act. You can't really say, okay, it's going to be... This is not a musical thing, you know? This is when you create a library. You tell to your players, just give me the straightest note that you can give me with the same dynamic and then you just record multiple of these notes. Let's move on to the bass trombone. Again, this I'm not sure if Mozart actually wrote these parts, but why not? Let's include them and this is how it sounds. <laughs> So let's record this. Right, and I think we've come to the part that you've all been waiting, and this is the choir. So let me show you how I'm going to do the choir. I'm going to take the sopranos first, I think. Uh, um, let's go to the sopranos here, even though I know the melody by now, but... That's even more important now. I have to use the mod wheel. And as you can see, by the way, I'm not using like a million controllers. I see many people have like tons and tons of controllers, which I also do. Uh, so this is a very valid thing to do. But if you play your parts one by one, like I do here, and you do it carefully, just the mod wheel can get you to so many different places. Okay, let's do the Sopranos. Okay, I think they start on bar three. Let's do this. It's so satisfying doing this. I hope you enjoyed this, by the way. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Let's move on to the altos. So the altos go. Let's do this.
tenors. <laughs> basis. I think we're done. That's it. The entire piece is here now. And I want to stress with this video, I mean, this, as you can see, is something that pretty much anyone can do, even if you're not a keyboard player, right? The thing that I want you guys to take from this video is that you don't need to have incredible piano skills. I'm obviously reading the score and I know how to read notation, but honestly, even if you try to figure out the MIDI notes, this will help you immensely if you try and play the thing instead of just entering the notes in the key editor. It's always going to sound way more natural. And bear in mind, this is completely unmixed, untouched. I haven't touched the dynamics. I haven't touched anything. I haven't mixed it. You can get away with many things if you orchestrate well and if you do like your mock-ups like this. It's very, very important. So don't worry about mixing. If you get it right at this stage, then the mixing is going to be just the terry on top. It's just going to be the icing on the cake. Of course, I would mix this properly, but in the meantime, let's listen to this. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it really helps me make more videos like this for you. Hit the like button and share. Please, please, please share this video. I want everyone to know that you can actually do this and it's not like a dark art, you know, it's something that you can do very easily. So let's listen to what we've done, let's listen to this Mozart masterpiece. This is Mozart, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.